that is something you need when you're trying to play, uh, when you're trying to mitigate the, the aggression the coming in for an opposing Smash team. But them. now we go straight into game number two, Mirko. Let's jump into the Welcome land of dawn, ladies and legends. gentlemen, for game number two. But not it's not going as I predicted here already. Nino, yeah, going straight to that goat lane. He does not care, but he has to be careful though. Against the Selena in the early game with a 1-1 as well, he can be locked down really easily. He has to play it very intelligently in this lane, but here we go. We're in the game. Udil in the mid lane actually winning it out with the help of Natalia. Oh yeah, it does Ooh. seem like that is going to be the case. A 2v1 situation Gosh. though from Clip side as Beloitsky goes in aggressively onto Nino. Yeah, this is exactly what I was worried about. If you play the Fovius in the goal lane, you're going to get bullied. But Leo Murphy trying to deal the same thing onto Beloitsky, Ooh. who is still able to push on with the dash and getting a shield there with a the passive. But both the teams disengage. Geek fam. Ooh, close Ooh. abyssal arrow. I love this kind of similar strategy coming in from oh! Beloitsky, but Beloitsky goes down in first blood. Why the Samson Galaxy A series here gets popped up, but now Leo Murphy might be in trouble. Uh oh, I don't think he is though. Leo Murphy gets out of that of that engage, that initial fight. But wow, what a play by Leo Murphy! He didn't he didn't expect, I think, um, Leo Murphy to come back. Oh, who would have? I thought he was done. He was gonna back away. It's one v two, but he just goes in, man. Kalhan, oh, one v one against Sally Boy. He will be forced to back away. And Geek Fam, despite being the initiators, the, in the initial people who actually started the cheese strat, they actually aren't winning in the early game. Oh. Sally Boy as well. Use it all really well. Leo Murphy. He has a grudge against Boloisky, man. He is targeting him. But wait a minute, Boloisky with the plays, getting the abyssal arrow down. Not enough damage to get the kill, but. These two roamers are going at it, man. There's beef. There's beef around uh, amongst them. Yeah, revenge story by the two assassin roamers here. Leo Murphy as well as Beloisky, as they are trying to give as much impact as they can for their fellow gold laners as well. But Lu here, it caught in a 2v1 situation. You just can't play aggressively. That aggressive in the early oh! game. Udo as well. What? This is an early game. How is Lunox dealing that much damage with the Chaos of Solar Rashi? What's going on? I mean, that's a question everyone's asking, man. Alter Ego is just going ham. High now will be taken quite low, but overall, I think Alter Ego will get a comfortable, uh, secure onto this turtle after making sure that Luke won't be part of the equation. Boloisky tries his best to steal. We've seen it before, but he will not be successful. Turtle slain by Samson Galaxy A series as a dive. Happens in the top side. Oh. Beautiful. Beautiful crossbow tank by Chadera. Up literally in the last second as Leo Murphy jumped onto him. But again, it's just Alter Ego mimicking that early game pressure they had in game number one, using it here to control the tempo of the game. And if Geek Fam doesn't read this out, it's gonna be very, very scary for them. Speaking of Leo Murphy, the man that you see on the camera, take a look at the statistics, Arashi. Yeah, 48% win rate, but. Yes, the most picked hero is the Cho and the Natalia, so you really gotta respect the possibility that that's happened, man. Leo Murphy right now is trying to info and Udo follows up on it. Oh, that single target damage is just what so is lethal. And look at Sunny Boy, he's able to go with the cables and the cutthroat to pick up another kill. Geek Fam have no answers to Alter Ego's early aggression. Man, and this is a lot of aggression as well. Everyone is actually putting in some pieces of the puzzle here to be able to make Geek Fam quite in disarray as of right now. Alter Ego Esports standing with a 2,000 gold lead right now, and Nino has just recently secured that Clock of Destiny as well. It really seems like Geekdom just isn't ready, man. They are being out strategized. It seems like Alter Ego is at home in this kind of playstyle, and Geek Fam is just struggling to keep up. And Sally Boy goes in for another aggressive play. Oh my god, again, forcing that sprint out of Elzura right before they're actually, wait, yeah, they're actually already setting up. They're always converting on things that Beloyz is getting caught again. He's gonna fall oh. here. He uses the flicker defensively. He actually is able to escape for a little bit. But Sunny Boy jumps in. That cable management was Woo. so on point. Again, Tadera, he goes in for the crossbow attack. Able to pop it just in the last oh. second there. But look at the sandwich maneuver. Demonic Force popped and used. Tadera not dashing at all. He's actually gonna be able to outplay Nino. But look at Leo Murphy picking up the scraps. Might lose his life in the process, but no. He gets out with the dashes. It's a one for one up top. He nearly got taken down there. Luckily, Leo Murphy was able to get out of there, realizing that Elzura was in the vicinity. But with that in mind, it is actually going to be Geek Fam with the upper hand in that turtle, as it is going to be the turtle slain camera by the Samsung Galaxy A series. I really thought that. I, I think I believe the idea for Alter Ego was to actually, you know, bait out 
he can towards the turtle and then unexpectedly dive into Kadira and shut him down from there, right? Give Nino the advantage in the lane, let Nino just crush him there. But Kadira was able to outplay it, and so it becomes an equal trade, kind of. And looking at the items right now, Inchera Tyson done for the side of high as Selly Boy! Selly Boy. Eterna. Man. Wow. He just goes in, man, and just like that, not done yet. Leo Murphy goes in for the play. We saw a kill to Kowalski! Leo Murphy, Selly Boy, everyone, but it's gonna be Hans who finally picks up a kill in the trade here. Alter Ego just grabbing the members of GFAM, taking them out just like you guys can go and all grab food. But look at Hans, he's gonna be in the midst of the damage that Selly Boy is able to push out there. They pick up the mid lane turret, Selly Boy goes in again. Elzura has nowhere to go. The cable management from Selly Boy oh, no. is on point. But Luke here comes in with a wild charge. You're gonna see him for a bit. Hans coming in for that lethal counter. Not in range. Selly Boy gets out, and Tadera does not get the range in to use any of his abilities. Alter Ego, the only Yo, Again and again. Oh, Beloiski has to conceal. He has to conceal. It's not going to be. Oh, the run. The battle. No, Leo Murphy finally catches up to him. Nino as well up top. That's the crossbow tag. Already ready <laughs> for Tadera, but yeah, you're not going to use it. Oh, and the flame shot actually goes Leo, in Leo. from Nino onto Kadera as Leo Murphy goes in aggressively, takes Kadera's life, and that is going to be El Zura, unable to defend his fellow teammate. Uh-oh, Leo Murphy, you bit too much than you can chew, but that was still a worse trade, a rumor for a gold laner. Absolutely, man. This Natalia is completely oppressive. They never know where Leo Murphy is, and he can essentially 1v1 majority of the heroes on the map right now. Except for say maybe Hans, but Hans can spend all his time just looking for Leo Murphy in the jungle. And as D can scramble, try and get control in the game, Archer will secure the next turtle, turtle slain by Samsung Galaxy A series. Man, this is so different to game number one. Game number one was very systemized. Sure, there were a lot of there was a lot of action, but not like this. Not the chaos that we've seen right now. Already 12 to 3 here in the seventh minute. As we do have a fun fact here by Grab, something that we've mentioned earlier as well is that Selena is the signature hero from below. Beloisky. During M3, Selena's Beloisky was only chosen one time against RRQ themselves, and that actually got them a win. Well, it, right now it doesn't seem like it's working that well against Alter Ego. Uh, again, man, I think if you're trying to match them in aggression, you have to bring something else, something special. You're coming up with a usual. Sally Boy goes in. Oh, man. Oh, oh my Nino. <laughs> Again, this is just what he does every single season. That flame shot's always been on point on the fighter, on the renner, any ranged ability. But look at this, that's gonna be Elzura popping the real world inflation. Hans picking up the kill onto Leo Murphy as Elzura gets dove on. High, dealing out the damage now against Hans. Nino stepping in to deal the damage as well. But look at the way they sidestep. Even the micromanagement here, they don't get overly, you know, they don't overcommit into anything. They watch, they look at everything that's going on, dodging away from the abyssal arrow. But not this time though. Beloisky gets it, but no follow-up again. They can't really follow up now that they're 4,000 gold behind, 13 to 4. It's insane, right? Because Selling Boy was one of the things that we mentioned before the game. And as soon as we saw the Fanny lockup, we were thinking, is Selling Boy able to perform as well as he should on someone like the Fanny? And so far, the answer has been yes. He's been very consistent. He focuses on his farming, but... His killer instinct is definitely on. He goes in at the right time to deal out the last amounts of damage to secure those hero wins that he eventually needs along the lines. And now, Alter Ego Esports, with that in mind, they're beating quite heavily with 4,000, but I don't think Geek Fam wants to go down without oh. a fight here. Oh, they've actually used two ultimates there to go for the damage on two words. Oh my god, Sally Boy gets top down. Oh, Lois can get the shutdown here. Chadera's still able to kind of away. The morning force oh. Oh. does not fail. He he gets the flame shot at will as high. Just deals. Well, he just soaks in everything. There's not he, just the damage tickles him. Did you see that? Four people were on him. Mm -hmm. Four people on him, and he doesn't care at all. That is a two for one for the side of Geek Fam, though. It is Kadera still uh, st still having such a difficult game. But right there, Boloiski was able to land the stun, the abyssal arrow, onto Sally Boy, and that will be his first death in the game. We're talking about Sally Boy, right? His killer instinct has never been in question. Sometimes it seems like he has too much killer instinct, but in this game, he's been absolutely calculated. And Leo Murphy, though, he is making sure that Geek Fam has to use all their ultimate. Try and take him out. Perfect positioning by Alter Ego. Putting him down, and that's where the kill picks up. But Hans almost, almost killing finds spree. a trade. That's a killing spree picked up by Udo. Pistol arrow connecting on to Pine. But I can't help but feel again the Selena pick. 
if it's not onto either Udil, Leo Murphy, or Selly Boy, it's gonna be tough. I think even if he connects it onto Selly Boy, it's gonna be really rough because if he actually pops the cable before that abyssal arrow lands, he'll dash away. That's what I wanted to mention. They went in for a very risky composition from the side of GeekFam, understanding that they do have a fanny. Wow. It's different, right? Because in game number one, when GeekFam picked up the fanny, Alter Ego Esports chose someone like the Cho, who has a more reliable source of CC to inhibit the fanny from going crazy. But this time around, it's very difficult for GeekFam to do that, as now we're going to take a look here at the items, Arash. Look at the difference between Kadera and Nino, man. And Nino is not snowballing too crazy, but he has four items right now, including the boots, and Kadera is left behind. Later on, he has the advantage of the range of the outplay potential with the crossbow of Tang, but we saw against RRQ that you can nullify that by building a wicked function. And there's a, a multitude of members on the set of Alter Ego that can go for that option. And aside from that, Udil has a built-in outplay mechanic, so Kadera is not going to have a good time later on in the game. Just look at his items. He's forced to build very, very defensively. A 1-1 one -one with only a Corrosion Scythe and DHS. He's not able to go for any more damage here. He needs to go for the Athena next and then with a nature. I just don't see him going for any more offensive items. And even here, it just seems like desperate attempts from Geek Fam to zone Alter Ego away from their base. They're turtling in, but their high ground all relies on one of well, two members here. Team and one one. You can see the damage coming through. Boloiski taken down to a quarter of his health. Eldura as well. Half HP. But if you take a look at Alter Ego, they're all still full HP. They're fresh, even though they're the ones doing the siege. It's kind of difficult because they do have a 7,000 gold gap and they're relying heavily on Elzura who needs to be able to get those items as well. Sure, Eve has a huge base amount of damage, but as Alter Ego Esports progress through their items and they can build those magic defense items, it's going to be very difficult for Elzura to have the impact that they initially intended for Elzura. They need the utility, they need the slow, they need to be able to hinder Alter Ego Esports, but the problem is as well, Alter Ego, they have people like Udil on the Lunox who's able to just kind of like maneuver around the big real world ma manipulations that may or may not land upon them. The only saving grace for Geekfan right now is the fact that Pi is serving as the main engage tool as well as the front line for the side of Alter Ego. So if he doesn't just, uh, he doesn't have the option of just diving onto Elzura and zoning him out of fights completely. So that is something that Geekfan can take advantage of. But once Nino gets stronger, he can somewhat serve as a secondary front line. He can serve as the dive going in the back line. So it's just going to be very difficult and Geekfan needs to try and, I don't know, Take full potential, take full advantage of how much Azura can be a nuisance for the set of Alter Ego. The damage dealt by Axe there is actually shown. And oh my, oh my goodness, Udil, that's a tank! And that's a Lunox. That, that, that is a dead tank. That is a dead tank, and oh. that's a dead 1-1. One, one. Now add on to the list, Elzura will fall as well. What the heck? Alter Ego, complete dominance here. Boloiski well, trying to line out of this little arrow, trying to zone the members away, but Alter Ego takes the base turret. No high ground left. Lethal Ooh. counter and the retribution by Hans there. High jumps in onto Beloy. They're looking to end the game right here, right now. Udil on this Lunox with the help of Ruby. What? Selly Boy finds it. Another kill goes on to the hands of Alter Ego. The immortality will fall there for Selly Boy, but the game will be sealed. A 2 0 victory. A complete shutout for Alter Ego. A huge dominant display coming in from Alter Ego East.